so super excited oh. about you being here. Mm. Are y'all excited as I am? Y'all say yes in the chat. Let me know. Yes in the chat. Yes in the chat. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yes. This is amazing. Okay. Love it, love it, love it. Listen, who is this their first time here with me on this platform with Michaels? Whose first time it is? Or if this is your first time, put number one. If this is your second or third, put two or three. One, 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 one. Okay, we got some twos in there, excellent. So we got a whole bunch of new people in the house. That means I got to introduce myself, don't I? Yes. I think that's what that means. <laughs> I think that is what that means. I got some people with some threes and everybody's like, all, oh, all. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. Let's get it started. Get it popping. Let's go ahead and play. First of all, let us play this little clip really, really quick. And that'll help you get the party rolling. right wasn't that cute that was cute I did that that was cute wasn't it <laughs> <laughs> I just had to introduce you introduce you to who I am a little bit and who our guest is tonight I am Karen Baxter as you, which way am I going over, over here Miss Creative CEO Karen Baxter what well, I am a national instructor for Michaels I've been here before I love being with Michaels why because I am a diehard crafter Literally, I decided to go buy stock in Michaels because I spend so much money there. You know, it's a thing when you walk in the store and people say, hey, Karen, that's a that's a problem, right? Not really, but that's what it is, right? So I started out as a crafter, just like the rest of you guys turned coach. I am an empowerment coach. I am a mindset mentor and I am your craft business bestie. And what I specialize in is helping women get out of their way and using their creativity and, and leveling up their mindset so they can take their businesses out of the back room, you know, that craft room in the back into the boardroom so they can level up their business and so they can take it to the back bank. Backroom, boardroom, business, bank. That's what I do. I really help women learn how to take their hobby and turn it into a hustle. That's what I do. Okay, but tonight for the next 12 weeks, we are kicking off tonight, learning about people, everyday people like you and me that are crafting in their homes after their nine to five. And they have decided that this is a passion and they have found purpose in their creativity. And what they wanna do is take that into a hustle, but they also want to share, I'm sorry, um, not sure what happened here, but we need to mm, stop participant sharing. There we go. That was just a little hiccup, no worries. Um, so what we need to do is we're gonna talk to Danny from Danny So Creative. She is a crafter. Um, we're gonna learn about her journey and what she needed to do, a little bit about her. Cause you know, we, we're relatable. We like to hear about what other people are doing and their journey into the craft world and things like that, right? And then we also wanna learn, we also wanna craft. We wanna learn how to do something, right? So tonight we're gonna talk to her and then we're gonna learn how to make these beautiful inspired geo coasters that are the bomb. And so who, how many people here, let put it in the chat, me, 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 me. If you're gonna craft along with Danny, you went and got your stuff from the store and you're gonna craft along or are you just sitting here watching? That's all right. I love it, I love it, I love it, yes. Danny, you got a lot of students tonight. I see. You got it. I love it. You can't, no supplies. That's okay. This is going to be tomorrow afternoon. You can find it on YouTube and you can come <laughs> back 
and see hi to Kira, Danny's cousin. I love it. She she faked that claim. I love it. Let's go ahead and bring you on up here. Let's go ahead and bring you on up here. Hey, Danny. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey, girl. Hey. How are you today? I'm good. Laughing at my favorite cousin. Apparently, I know, Don't right? Tell nobody else that. <laughs> and her son. It's her son, Tobias. Let that is my favorite Tobias. son. Yes, that is her is. favorite son. Her only son. You my know, only son. <laughs> I love it. We are real people. So Danny, Danny Breast, Danny's so creative. Okay. Yes, tell me, tell the people a little bit about you. Well, um, nine to five, I'm a nurse by trade. Um, I don't see patients anymore, but I work um, on the admin side. And um, that's been a, a passion of mine for a really long time, something I wanted to do since I was little. Um, I'm a mother of a son. Um, and I'm a crafter. Yes. We, we, that's the thing. Did, did y'all see how her, you know, face lighted up when she said she, I'm a crafter. I mean, she don't even, like, you know, some of my, some people I work with on here. I like y'all too, though. <laughs> <laughs> don't think I don't like y'all. I like, I like y'all, <laughs> but that craft thing, I don't know. It, it's got you beat. So Danny, tell me, okay, so what is, what was your journey into crafting? What was that thing that triggered you to start like, oh, I like this? Um, well, honestly, I've had a couple of journeys into to crafting. I've, I started crafting when I was younger, like around eight years old. Um, and I was doing really intricate, like beading and earrings and bracelets and things like that. Um, and then I got out of it. Uh, for a little bit and kind of got into the mindset that I wasn't artsy, I wasn't crafty, I wasn't creative. Um, until one day I, I saw some people doing some things and I was like, maybe I can, maybe I can do that. Let me try that out. Um, and, and it really snowballed into now I want things nobody else has, so I have right. to make it. <laughs> so right. let right. me learn how to sew so that I can make this purse. And then I turned into clothes and it just kept going. Right. Hence the name Danny So Creative. Yes. However, yes. you have changed your name kind of to DS Creative. Yes. Okay. Why is that? Well, honestly, I didn't want to get rid of the Danny So because people literally call me Danny So. Like that right. is my name. Yeah. So <laughs> they, um, they, they're holding on to the sewing piece. I don't think it's coming back, but it is a part of me. It's how I started um, as an adult. Um, and it just kind of led me to this resin journey. Um, but once I started with resin, I really realized this is where, this is where my craft home is. You know, I, I love to sew, um, but it wasn't my passion. You just got to the point to where it's like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to sew another skirt. And I kept putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. So mm -hmm. I knew that wasn't it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when, what is it? And when did you figure out what it was? Um, probably during the pandemic, like a lot of us, yeah. <laughs> the yeah. beginning of the pandemic, I was yeah. interested in resin before then, mm -hmm. but I really, I didn't really have time to do it. So I was just watching YouTube, looking on Pinterest, like this looks very interesting. Um, and then I started sewing masks, um, like a lot of us did and mm -hmm. honestly began to get even more burnt out with sewing than I was. And so I started dibbling and dabbling in resin just to kind of like res like sewing masks became another job and I needed something else for relief and resin was like that relief um and I, you remember I was like what what I need to buy like I remember <laughs> what most do I, need <laughs> I to remember get? What, what are these earrings this don't look right um, right yeah and then it just clicked and I just kept going yep and when you kept going to the point, if you move a little bit to the left, let me see that piece on the back. Look at that y'all on the back <laughs> wall. Look at that masterpiece on the back wall. Yes, yeah, she has really done major things. Uh, tell, tell the people about your experience. Somehow you thought that you can sneak into a hotel and what happened? <laughs> tell, tell the people about that piece. What happened with that? So if, if my director is on here, Sorry, but uh, <laughs> I, was, I was out of town for work um, and I had some pieces that I needed to get done. Um, so I brought resin with me mm -hmm. and I had this huge 24 by 30 wall piece that I was working on 
And I really thought that I was just gonna sneak into this hotel with a cart full of art supplies and this huge piece without being noticed. To my defense, there was nobody in that lobby when I left. <laughs> <laughs> and when I came back, there was like five people and they were all just like, what is that? And right. It took me like 30, 45 minutes to get out of the hotel lobby at that point. How Okay, so that plays into your next thing. The fact that, and that piece, it was really already sold before you cre finished it, wasn't it? It was, it was. It was something that um, I wanted to create. I didn't create it for anyone in particular, um, but it was just something I had in my mind and I wanted to, to get out. Um, I also kind of put a challenge out there for my clubhouse group um, to do a Black History Month inspired um, piece. And so that was my piece. And I posted me um, some of the videos that I was doing as I was pouring on TikTok. And someone sent me an inbox and said, hey, are you selling that? And I was like, well, I guess I am. Yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so now you have turned, it was before that piece, but you've turned that hobby that you were just kind of playing around into your hustle. You, yep. even though you have your nine to five job, you found your passion and now you're able to take that passion and translate it into hard earned cold cash, right? That is correct. Yes. How does that feel? How does that feel to be able to do that? <laughs> it feels good. Um, yep. Honestly, it's scary, but it, it yeah. feels good because yeah. it's not, um, not how I'm used to making my money, yeah. you know? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. it's a little different. Yeah. And so... Do you see yourself not crafting ever? Oh, no, I don't see that. Yeah. And you can probably see the more you do your resin and your paint pouring on all that stuff, your business is, you're just going to get better personally. Your skill is just going to level up and get better. And therefore your business will continue to grow the way you want it to grow. It Absolutely. feels good to be able to think. A lot of people, you guys out there, sometimes think the things that you do are not that important or not such a big deal because you feel like, well, I can do it. Anybody can do it, right? No, that's mm -hmm. not the case. It's not the case. Your skill is a gift. You have a gift. You have creativity where you can see a piece because I know, Danny, you envision that piece that you sold on TikTok. You just envision that piece in your brain, right? Yep. And it just you say, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. And it came out through you fingertips into the world. And there it is. And it's going to be hanging in someone else's home. A piece of you will be hanging in someone else's home. So mm -hmm. I need for you guys to understand that you guys have that value too. You're able to do the same things. Don't think just because you can do it, everybody can do it because you can't. You can't, it's just not there. And Danny finally realized that and she's standing in that. And now that is what's helping her have confidence in her craft. And therefore, it's able to help her build a business. You want to speak to that? Um, yeah, I agree 100%. Like, even with the sewing, you know, I felt like, gosh, everyone is sewing. Everyone's doing the same thing. How could I stand out? Um, my perfectionism just wouldn't let me keep sewing. Like that, that was a lot, but it was the same thing with the resin. Everyone, when I, I felt like when I discovered it, it was already so saturated. Yeah. Um, and I'm watching all of these videos and everyone's kind of doing the same thing. And, you know, um, I just kind of set out on how can I make myself different? I mean, I do, I, I do have geodes. I do have things that, you know, kind of look like what a lot of people are doing, but I also have an aesthetic that is mine. Right. Um, that, you know, comes from my brain and, you know, that I can say, I, I know that's me because that's, those are the kinds of things that I like to do. Absolutely. So everybody has their own aesthetic, even if it looks somewhat similar to someone, there's something different about it that makes it yours. Right. Right. So there's no reason to feel like you're in competition with anybody else. No, not at all. And I'm not looking at you, Danny. I'm looking <laughs> blink, at everybody in, uh, in the blink, blink. You know, there's no reason because nobody is you. Nobody is in your brain. Nobody has your aesthetic. Nobody has your eye for detail. Nobody else has that, right? Yeah, Tawana, you see my lashes? Y'all see them. Okay. <laughs> nobody else has that, right? 
you so I know a lot of you guys out there you start and you look around at other people and what they're doing and think that you have to be like them in order to be successful you don't that is the quickest way to not being successful because you can't be that's not sustainable copying and being someone other than yourself is not sustainable the only thing that is sustainable is you being authentically you and being willing to embrace the gift that you were given, the vision that you were given and create from that space. And that is where you will stand out in the crowd because nobody else can do what you do like you do. Nobody else can do me better than I could do me, okay? And nobody else can do you better than you can do you. And Danny has figured that out. Danny has yes, figured that out. And she is going crazy with it. Okay. She's going crazy with it. So let's go ahead and get crazy. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch the screen just a little bit. We're going to add Danny's um, overhead camera to the mix. I'm going to move myself out the way. And Danny, I love the way your screen just looks. It just adds up and it's just you. It's just the whole thing of you. <laughs> well, I love how that, that, how that just works out like that. So Danny, I'm going to back up. You go ahead and get it started. Um, you have the floor. I'll pop in and we'll be looking if you have questions. Um, the team will be looking in the chat for your questions. And then when it's time, we'll we'll talk about it. But Danny, it's all on you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, well, thank you to everyone who actually went out and bought supplies and is going to uh, craft along with me. I appreciate that. So um, I want to give a quick safety uh, disclaimer. Resin is a chemical. Okay, so if you are looking to do this um, full time or do more of it, please do your research on the appropriate PPE, like that's the million dollar word right now anyways, on what you need. Usually when I'm, when I'm doing resin, I'm wearing a mask. <laughs> so I do have my mask. Um, for the purposes of today, I will not be uh, wearing that mask. But if you want to put on a mask to make yourself feel better, please do. We should all have at least a surgical mask or a cloth mask right now that would be beneficial. Um, so let's go through uh, what we need. So we have our coaster molds. We have those here in front of me. Um, the square ones is what I put on the list, but just in case you got these from Michael's, I got a couple of those as well so that we can show you both ways. Um, we have our crushed glass, you can see. Um, these I got from Michael's as well. I just kind of put it in my own um, container. Um, we have white pigment, which uh, today I'm using just acrylic paint. Um, and then I'm using for my gold pigment, I'm using a metallic gold powder, but you guys can use either acrylic paint um, or you could use the tester's gold paint that I put in the list. Um, I have my mixing cups and my mixing cups already have resin in them because I was trying to get prepared for you guys and I have like huge jugs of resin. So nobody wants to see that. So I have my two parts of mesin, resin um, in my mixing cups and we'll mix those up shortly. Um, I also have some gloves here that I'm going to use. And I have popsicle sticks as mixers that we'll need um, and some small cups to use um, as we pour our colors. So I also put some paint pins on there. We won't be able to use the paint pins during this initial pour, but I will show you how you can incorporate the paint pins towards the end. So if anybody needs to run and get anything, do that now before we get started. Y'all better run. <laughs> Hurry up. Hurry up. <laughs> I tried to keep this as simple as possible, but I'm going to put on my gloves while y'all running. Um, someone asked, did you have, I just, someone asked, did you have, um, what kind of, um, uh, resin do you use? Um, I use, actually use a couple different kinds of resins. Today I'm using uh, a counterculture DIY resin. Um, for the most part, you just want to make sure that you have a artist resin. Um, the overhead camp, you can't see my gloves down there. Um, somebody said, I can see them. I'm not sure. Maybe tilt your hands. Maybe they said tilt a little bit more. Um, drop in the chat. How many, I want to see who can see them. Drop in the chat. You can see. Yes, 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 yes. I can yes. see. I don't know. Very good. Very good. Very good. Okay. You're good, Danny. You're good. Okay. You're good. Um, I, 
you want to make sure that you're getting an artist resin. Um, that is what you're going to need for this kind of work. There's a few different kinds of resins out there, um, such as a casting resin that I know a couple people got and it turns white and that's kind of what they use like on movie sets and things like that. So that's not what we're using. We want to make sure that it's going to dry clear. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Hold on, Danny. I'm sorry. Um, if you are on your phone, if you are on your phone, you need to swipe left, I think, or swipe, yeah, swipe left in order to see speaker view. That'll be the way you should be able to see it, okay? I hope that helps. The screen that's highlighted is her talking, not her hands. You can highlight both her face. Thank you, Ziva, both and, and everything. But she's highlighted on the screen. I know it's a little difficult if you are on your phone, but you got to swipe to find it, unfortunately. But um, the majority of people, it did, Lisa, very good. Okay, great, right. great job. Let's keep Thank it moving. You. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, forgot where I was, but artist resin is what you want to use. I like counterculture DIY when I'm working with um, like coasters and trays, anything that's going to have potential for hot liquids or like your coffee or something. Um, and that's mainly because they have a pretty high heat tolerance once cured. Um, all resins have a, a decent heat tolerance, but I just like that little extra protection of that high heat tolerance. So I use counterculture DIY for these kinds of things. And I have another resin that I use for um, my wall pieces. Um, amazing clear cast. I've used it. Um, I don't have, you know, anything to say either way. I just prefer the extra the extra heat tolerance that um, counterculture gives me, but I've used it and it's worked well. I just wanted something extra with the amount of coasters and things that I was making. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so first, the team will handle questions because we. Want oh, okay. To Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so first things first. I'm gonna move this out of the way. So um, you want to get your resin and you're gonna pour equal parts of each part. You should have a part A and a part B, right? So I. I'm going to make about eight ounces total. So I have four ounces of part B and four ounces of part A poured. Um, you can do all of that in one cup if you want, um, or you can do it in two separate cups like I have. So you can make sure you got the same amount and then pour one into the other, which is what I'm going to do. All right. So I'm going to pour in, I'm going to pour the thinner one into the thicker one just because it's easier that way and it um, easier to make sure I get all of it out of this second cup. Okay, so once you get, um, I wanna give you guys a little bit of time to make sure that you get your resin poured. So let me know. You need a little bit more time. Okay. So you guys, she said, are your cups plastic or glass? These are plastic. Okay. All right. These Why do plastic. you use plastic? Um, well, usually I use a plastic or a silicone. Um, these are just, this was small, good for the class today. But usually I use like the bigger plastic ones that you can get from Home Depot because I can get a few different uses out of those. Mm -hmm. um, once, the dry, once the resin cures, I can just pull the dry resin out. And the same with the silicone, you can get multiple uses out of those. You can just clean the dry resin out. Um, these I will throw away because you're not gonna be able to cle cleanly get the clear, um, the dry resin out of this. Right. So um, you want to be stirring your resin um, and try to do it slowly. We're going to stir for about two or three minutes until it's clear again. So okay. I can, we can take some questions during that time. Okay. So everyone, I, I can't turn, she cannot turn her camera any other way, but the way it is. Um, hopefully, no, your camera is fine where okay. it is. Um, I'm not sure. I, we want to make it as easy for everybody, but the way her set is setup is right now, it's the best for her to work and everyone, the majority of the people to see it. Um, I apologize if it's not working on your phone, but there will be a, a replay of this and you'll be able to see it fully. 
Um, which viscosity level of counterculture? Is it my understanding? It's my understanding that there are different types of counterculture. There, there is. There is a thin vis viscosity, there's a medium viscosity, and then there's just a regular artist resin, which is their thickest. I prefer the medium viscosity. Um, I haven't tried the thicker one. I keep saying I'm going to, and I just, I, I haven't yet. Um, but I have tried the thinner one, and I just, I'm not a fan. I felt like it was a little bit more, um, gave me more air bubbles than I would prefer. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sticking with the medium viscosity. Okay. What type of resin do you use for wild art? Um, I use the uh, glaze coat, I think it's called, the one that you get from Home Depot. Mm -hmm. um, I use that one for my wall art. It dries really hard um, and just perfect and really shiny. Mm -hmm. Are you, when you measure, are you measuring by yeah. volume or by weight? by volume, but you want to make sure that you use whatever measurement is on the instructions for your resins, because some of them are by weight. What I have noticed is the majority of those are, are not from the U.S. though. Cool. Team, if I'm missing anything, let me know and please chime in uh, with questions that I may be missing. Um, there was a question about whether it was four ounces each or eight ounces of each four ounces each. That's what I'm mixing up today. So a total of eight ounces. Danny, what I'm gonna do is take your right for right now, I'm gonna remove, I'm gonna just have your hands. People okay, that's chat fine. that are have, having issues, can you see her hands at this point? Let me know in the chat. Oh, okay. okay. All right. All right. We trying to make it work for you now. We trying to make, don't say, don't listen. Y'all are going to get a survey after this. And it better be all 10. Okay. Excellent across the board. Do not say nothing about her hands. You couldn't see them. Don't do that. <laughs> Oh, while we waiting, I want to do roll call. Where's my tribe? Where's my tribe? Where's my tribe? CBC or CBCIC? Where is my tribe? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Um, my tribe is, I have a community on Facebook uh, called uh, the Creative Boss Collective. And we... <laughs> We uh we are all we run together in a in a pa in packs actually, and uh, <laughs> it is my community on Facebook. Uh, it's called the Creative Boss Collective, and I also have a private community uh a membership where I coach and I train one on one. And so this is the tribe uh that is supporting our sisterhood and and our fellow crafter here on the stage. And it's so great to see them send out that's how you found out about it uh peewee i can't mondrill mondrill i hope i said it right forgive me forgive me you're here i love it i love it i love it y'all are amazing absolutely amazing okay are we there yet danny because we could keep talking you know i can keep um we're almost there how does everybody's resin look um it should be clear there shouldn't be any streaks in it you may have some air bubbles um more than probably what i have because I'm not using a wooden stick to stir. Um, I'm using an acrylic stick. Thanks, Jessica. <laughs> for okay. helping me out with that. But here is a question. What type of resin would you suggest if we just want to try to see if we like working with resin? Is epoxy the same as resin? Um, yes, it, it, epoxy and resin um, are interchangeable. Um, if you just want to see if you like working with resin, then I would recommend like getting the, the eight ounce kit or the 16 ounce kit from Michaels. Okay. Um, because then you're not wasting a lot of money and resin if it's not your thing. Excellent. Um, Patricia, it is Danielle's iPhone. Danielle's iPhone. Okay. Yeah, should, should be seen clear. Thank you. Yep. Danielle's iPhone. 
So mine has cleared up, but what I do want us to do is just kind of allow the resin to chill out a little bit because when you're trying to get a geode inspired something, um, it's easier when the resin is a little bit thicker so that it doesn't mix as much. Excellent. So here's, I'm gonna pop myself on the screen really quick. Where am I? Okay. Um, here I am. Replace spotlight. Look what I got y'all. <laughs> Woohoo! So y'all better be paying attention. Pay attention because I have a couple of gift cards. Look, don't say nothing about it being fa la 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 llama. Don't say that because <laughs> it's gonna spin the same way in the store. Okay, so I have a couple of gift cards, twenty dollar gift cards. I will be giving away tonight, so you better be paying attention because my team will be asking some questions, and whoever gets it first, or however they're gonna do it, because sometimes I stay in my lane. I have to stay in my lane. So whatever <laughs> they say <laughs> is what's gonna go. So I have a couple of these gift cards from Michaels. That, that are already in an envelope ready for somebody name. So you better be paying attention. Y'all ready? Don't play. Okay. All right. While we are waiting, what I want to do is give a minute because right now you're not missing anything. Danny, let me know when it's time for me to shoot back to you. Okay. Sure. Um, but while we are waiting, I want to give a couple of shout outs to some people that really promoted and really helped us and me along the way with um, letting people know about Michaels and about this, this what we're doing here, this series. And um, this in these are groups on Facebook. So pay attention, you might want to join, you may not, I don't know. But they're amazing, okay? So the first one I want to say thank you to is Inspired Paper Community. Inspired Paper Community. On this platform, we're going to have 12, including this one, 12 different types of crafts. And one of them is including paper. And some of our community members are members of these groups. And the groups are supporting their community members on this platform and supporting Michaels for what they are doing to extend this to the community. So the first one is Inspired Paper Community. The next one is Black Girls Who Craft with Cricket. Black Girls Who Craft with Cricket. Another one is a Black Woman Made That, official craft group, okay? Also the Mommy Grind, amazing group about moms and how to survive as a mom and all that mom stuff. I'm so glad I'm out of that. I'm still a mom, but I ain't got to do with all that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Black Girls Craft LLC. Also the Creative Brown Girl Community. Uh, she is going to actually be on the platform later on in the series. So I'm super excited about that. The Lotus group actually has, she's a member of Tribe too, and she is going to be on uh, helping us promote. Also, uh, my VO, somebody on my major team, CPNS Boutique VIPs. Y'all got to go and follow all of these people. And of course, the Tea Talk. The Tea Talk is all of these are amazing, amazing groups on Facebook that do various things, but they all have to do with crafting and things of that nature or just empowerment. They support me and I support them, which means we support each other as a community. So make sure I wanna say personally, thank you for what you already have done and what you're going to be doing in the future. I also wanna thank Michaels. I personally want to thank Michaels, Michaels because Michaels is being an innovator in the market in terms of bringing different things to the platform, to the creative community. It is about community. This community classroom project allows them to put people like me and Danny in front of you to be seen and to be learned from and to connect with. It's an amazing thing. And I'm very proud to be the first woman of color to be able to do this type of series on their platform. Y'all drop a heart or something, some hand claps or something in the chat for Michaels of all people. Come on now, drop it in the chat and let them know that you appreciate them providing this space 
for all of us to craft and learn and connect from each other, okay? And of course, Danny, make sure that you're following Danny. Her information will be dropped into chat pretty soon. Make sure you're following her and connect while you're in here, connect with other people. All of these people, we got 344 people here that all love the craft. Y'all got something in common. So connect with each other, learn from each other, chat with each other. And that's what it is and show love. How, what are we looking at like, Danny? Um, I mean, we can go ahead because in my real life, I kind of push it to the limit and I don't want to do y'all like that. So right. <laughs> we can go ahead and get started. Okay, right. we're back to Danny. <laughs> Michaels is awesome. You are right. Michaels is awesome, man. And let me tell y'all something. I want y'all to take a screenshot when we get back on the screen. Take a screenshot and post it and tag Michaels at Michaels Stores and make it with Michaels. Tag them. Let people know that you was here and you appreciate what Michaels is doing for our craft community. Go ahead, Danny. Okay. So I have three um smaller mixing cups and these are paper. Um, I will say if you're using the testers paint, just be mindful of the paper because sometimes, um, wait, no, sorry, be mindful of plastic um, because sometimes it can eat through because it has like that spray paint consistency. So if you have plastic, just be mindful of that. Um, so I have three cups here. I'm going to separate the resin into some and then I'm also going to leave some clear in the plastic cup. So uh, my first cup, I'm not gonna put that much in um, because this is going to be the cup that I add my crushed glass to and I just wanna make sure I coat it. And then my other two cups, I'm gonna do a good amount, uh, probably about half for a white and a little less than half for the gold. I usually use more um, white than gold. Okay, and then I'm gonna set those to the side. So let's get our crushed glass. And um, you can really mix up how much, how much you want um, in your coaster. I'm gonna do a good amount since I am doing about four coasters with you guys. And these square ones, they take, they take a lot. Um, so you just wanna make sure that you coat coat the glass with the resin um, and it's like a I don't even know what that's called almost like a gel because of all the glass Danny yes while you're mixing it someone mixed a little bit too much what do you what do you too much resin what do you suggest for that um you well it may not be too much at the end because my coasters are probably going to be a little thin so you should be fine okay these these coaster molds are fairly deep and if you have anything else like if you have if you are a resin person or maybe you have some molds around you can um you know pour a little extra into a mold that you have around mm -hmm. but you got to make sure that you still did even parts of everything right Not that you you poured eight ounces of this and two ounces of that that won't work right, right. that okay. big of a difference um is not gonna work you know it's a little forgiving but it's not that forgiving. Mm -hmm. okay okay all righty so then i'm gonna take my bigger one here and i'm going to mix the white acrylic paint now one thing you need to know about resin and acrylic paint is it can go from good to bad really quickly. So you wanna make sure that when you're adding acrylic paint, especially for your pigment, that you're using only about 10% ratio. You can play with it a little bit, but just, you know, I guess <laughs> it's, it's a trial and error. Like it's hard to say. So you, I would start out small, maybe with like a drop or two like that and see if we get the color and the consistency that we want. And so we just mix. I typically um, put in a little bit more because usually when I'm mixing a white, I like a more opaque white um, and not like translucent. So the way you can kind of tell is when you lift it up on the stick and if you can really see through to the stick, if that's what you want, then that's fine. That's not what I want. So I'm gonna add a little bit more.
Um, what can you use for color other than acrylic paint? Oh, wow. You can really use anything. So for those of you who are starting out and aren't sure about if this is going to be the journey for you, honestly, you can go to the dollar store and get some um, eye makeup because um, that's essentially mica powder um, and it's a lot cheaper. So you can use mica powder, you can use acrylic paint, um, you can use what is called alcohol inks. Um, I have some metallic powder, which is it's like mica powder, but it's a little bit heavier and it gives a different effect. Um, I think that's close to about it. Yeah. Well, what about I mean, pigment paste? Pigment. Oh paste? yes. Pigment paste, which is um, one part of the resin. So there's two parts to resin. So it's one part of the resin mixed with um, mica powder. Um, so it, and it's more like it's very opaque and it's very vibrant color. Mm -hmm. Someone asked about food coloring. I've never tried food coloring mm -hmm. or alcohol ink. You can't do alcohol ink. No, you can do alcohol ink. I would be concerned with food coloring just because of what's in it. Um, I will say resin and water do not mix. Yeah. So anything that's like diluted with water, do not use that. Um, so this is my metallic paint that I'm going to, I mean, metallic powder that I'm going to be using. And really, you just need a little bit. If you're using the tester's paint, you really, you need a little bit as well. You can maybe dip your um, stick in there and take a little bit out and mix it in there. Um, and as you're mixing it, it's going to look like molten gold, mm. which I love. If you see that. Mm, and beautiful. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> you don't make me I go in the room and pull out all the stuff, man. <laughs> I love the metallic powders. Uh, and the there's other ways that you can get the same effects from the metallic powders. You can use, again, the tester's paint. You can use spray paint. Um, there's an extra step you got to go through to do that, like step outside. Um, and you can use um, something that's called liquid, liquid paint, which is essentially spray paint without the spray. <laughs> So we are good to go. I have my three colors. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to set these to the side so I can bring back these. Okay. Now, so if you're working with the round coasters, one thing I want to say, if you want these to be functional, keep your crushed glass to maybe like a small corner or just along the outside edge, especially these, these are a smaller coaster. Um, so in this one, we're just gonna do a little bit cause it's a really small coaster and has that opening in the middle. But if you decide to do this again later, you can use glitter instead of crushed glass and then you can kind of pour it in the middle. If you do the crushed glass in the middle, it's gonna be difficult to set your, your cup on it. Makes sense. So I'm just going to play a little bit and put some in the corners on this, uh, on the round one. And maybe I'll just leave that one alone. We'll see. And then I like to line the edge of the square ones with my crushed glass. Now this, the square edges are a little, um, you're not gonna be able to get your crushed glass like into all these little pieces and don't worry about that. So don't try to like squeeze them in there. We're gonna get some resin in there. Uh, Brie asked the question, what can you not use with resin? Like water-based ink or spray adhesive, et cetera? Um, no, water-based. Um, let me see, I've also used India ink, I've used acrylic ink, um, and I think I've used, I wanna say some watercolor ink that wasn't mixed with water. Um, yeah, so I've used all of those things. All of those things you can find in, in my Michael store, it's like in the back where the, where the, show, um, the, uh, the framing area is. I even have some like, um, it's acrylic paint, but it's just a thinner version of acrylic paint. So you can use all of that. I would just stay away from anything that's like heavily mixed with water. Um, I don't know about using adhesive with resin. That's not something I've ever tried. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think to honestly. Mm -hmm. 
Is so fresh glass permanent once the resin is cured? Yes. Once the resin is cured, if your piece of glass is touching a piece of resin, it is in there. Mm -hmm. Just when one it, reason. Mm -hmm, go ahead. Oh, I'm saying this is one reason why I like to mix it up with the resin first so that you know you've already got it touched. When do you use the glitter if you're using it? Um, you would use the glitter in place of the crushed glass, especially if you kind of want it to go in the middle or, you know, with your geode, um, or you can use it as an accent, like you're using the gold. Great. Does resin, okay, hold on. Does resin absorb water such as water from ice cubes in a glass? Before it's cured or after? I don't think if you're putting it on, you know, at using it as a coaster, will the resin oh. absorb the water? No, it will not. No, you can just wipe it off. Um, I moved my coaster, but I have a coaster here that I just kind of wipe off with um, either alcohol or like a Lysol wipe, you know, but if it gets condensation on it, but it doesn't absorb anything. Got it. Okay. Are you guys ready to move on to the next step? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I'm going to take my clear and I'm going to pour the clear into each of the molds. So um, I just want to get a, a good base of clear in each mold. You don't have to do the crushed glass first. You can do, you can put that in after, right? No, yeah, you can do it at whatever, um, whichever way that you want. The good thing about resin is you can really do what you want, but I want you to understand resin is also going to do what it wants. <laughs> so we're <laughs> going to have a nice, um, pretty geode or, you know, pretty design. And when you wake up in the morning, it may not look like that. I need you guys to, to understand and um, be okay with that. Mm -hmm. Is there a trick to keeping the crushed glass from cutting? Um, you can, after the resin is cured, you can file it. You can use a file to kind of, um, dull down the edges or like I have a Dremel. So if I have something that's really sharp, I'll use a file or my Dremel tool to kind of dull that down so that I'm not sending something that's gonna cut someone up. Good, 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 good. Now, Kiesha, it sounds like she, she, this is a question, like she asked it just to be asking, but I don't know. <laughs> she says, if you accidentally get a glass stuck to the table using resin, how can you remove it? It sounds like that might be some personal there. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds like something that happens. It um, kind of happens. <laughs> uh, you are not so by yourself, you girl. Do, what you can try is to get a, um, a heat gun, um, which I didn't, I didn't put it on the list because I didn't want to give you guys so many things to get. But usually I'll use the heat gun um, to kind of pop the bubbles at the end. Um, you can get a heat gun and kind of warm that resin up. Um, if you don't have a heat gun, you can maybe try a hair dryer on high and see if you, you can kind of scrape it up with something. You may um, pull some paint up with it, mm -hmm. but that piece of glass will be free. It'll be free. Give it yes. free. <laughs> how about, <laughs> how do you keep the colors from overlapping each other? So that's, that's the hard thing. Um, if I'm working on coasters, it's very difficult to do that. Um, this is why I kind of wanted to let it set up a little bit. So the thicker that the resin is, the less it will mix with the color next to it. We're also gonna try to not pour directly on top of the previous color so that when it does touch, it's kind of just touching and not like mixing and melding. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm working on uh, like a wall piece, I may set up barriers with um, either like a glue gun or, um, you know, some cement or something like that to kind of keep things in place. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. So we are ready. Um, my resin is warm and it's not as thick as I prefer, but I don't want to keep you guys all night. So really at this point, it's up to you on what you like your design to look like. I um, usually like to take my gold 
and outline right around my uh, crushed glass. And so I kind of like pour right on top of that and frame it in there. And I'm gonna do that with kind of all of them. And I kind of like to overlap on the rocks because I just like how it eventually looks. When you use your Dremel and the results mm -hmm. afterwards show white marks, how do you get rid of that or do you wet sand it? So there are multiple ways you can do that. <laughs> um, you can wet sand it and then you can um, polish it. I typically, if there are white spots and I've had to like, and I'm not using a paint pen to kind of cover up my edges, I will put another really thin layer of resin on top. Okay, that was another question. Can you add a layer of resin after curing? Yes, you can. You can, you can add multiple layers. Um, honestly, the key to a good geo is probably about three layers because it's so much detail that goes into that. Mm -hmm. All right. And so then we just want to alternate our colors. So now I'm going to come with the white and we see how already over here, the gold has just kind of done its own thing. So I'm gonna try not to touch right on the gold for that. So that when it, as it does spread out and it doesn't have to be a perfect line or anything, kind of the, the beauty of geodes is that they're not perfect. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of crafting that it, Absolutely. It, it's just going to be what it's going to be, you know, let it be. It doesn't have to be perfection. Listen, in my circle, the word perfection is considered a cuss word. We don't say that around. That's right. <laughs> you know, there is no such thing as perfection. There is none. So stop trying to achieve it. Stop. And I think that's why I like crafting so much because in my normal everyday life, <laughs> right? I'm such a perfectionist. I like that, Carolyn. Art happens. I love That's that. Right. I love that. Um, uh, there was a question about how long the curing, the setting period would be. Um, most resins is 24 hours until it's hard. So like when I wake up in the morning, it'll be hard enough for me to take out of the mold. Mm -hmm. um, but it's usually 72 hours until it's fully cured. Um, and that means, um, you know, you can set, you know, your hot stuff on it. You can, um, you know, it's no longer releasing kind of any chemicals at that point. You're very welcome. Y'all listen, while we're sitting here listening, I'm just going to tell you, as you're going through this craft journey of yours, just allow yourself to enjoy it. You can mm -hmm. take away the fun of crafting by trying to make it something that it's not supposed to be. Just go into the store, go into Michael's, go and buy your stuff, go home and have fun. Now, understand if you are trying to do this as a business, there are some things that you need to follow as a consumer, you know, what your consumer want, want and things like that. But stop trying to be something that you will never be, which is perfect. What makes your business go and grow is that people want to get to know you, you, not someone who you're pretending to be, not something that's fake. We have enough fake stuff in the world, don't we? Let people let sh see your shine. Let people get to know you. There is only one you. You were the only one that was created the way you were created. So allow that to flow through your body, out through the fingertips, into the world so other people can experience a piece of you, not who you are trying to be. Because you'll be a poor imitation of me every single time. You can't do me like I do me. And I can't do you like you do you. So just please, I need y'all to be, when just go and do you. You're enough. That's what you need to know. You are enough. There you go. Shakura, you needed to hear that. I always try to make my stuff perfect. Girl, you better stop it. You are wasting. <laughs> you are wasting. There's no such time. thing as perfect. It's not. It's not. And you take the joy away from it. Listen, don't y'all have enough stresses in your life? 
Don't you guys have enough stresses from bills to kids to family to the house payment to the, the, the roof need to be repaired and COVID and, and terrorist threats and you can't go to the store unless you're afraid to get shot. You know, it's don't y'all have enough stress? So why are you going to try to put stress on another stress on you by trying to achieve something that is unachievable? Listen to me. What does, does that make? Uh, it's unachievable. Perfection is unachievable. So why are we wasting our time and not having fun? Crafting is fun, ladies and gentlemen. Crafting is fun. Can it just be, can you just let the craft thing be fun? Can you just do that? For me, for me, trust me when I say it, okay? <laughs> just, just enjoy it. You have enough stress in your life. Let crafting be your happy place. People in this world try to put pressure on you to be perfect, all right? Don't put it on yourself too. That's right, Angel, make it do what it do. Yes, <laughs> make it do what it do. <laughs> Love it. Can you drag colors together with a toothpick? Absolutely, you can. Oh, I'm you sorry. You can, Angel as you class. see me doing now. It's, <laughs> it's not a toothpick, but it's um, one of my wooden sticks. So um, I, I think my resin got a little too thick. And so it's really not, it's really not playing well with the, the color next to it. So I'm just helping it along a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, people are saying you're doing a great job, Danny. Yes, Thank I was you. trying to, yeah, I was trying to make candles perfect to start my business. And my issue is trying, girl, Latrice, let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> Latrice, this is not my class. This is Danny's class, but I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna always be mad at yourself because you're not gonna achieve what you think you're trying to achieve. That's not a that's not good. So just do your best. Do your best, and that is good enough. And I mean that. What is your best? Your best is not perfection. If you've done covered your bases, you excuse me, use the right ingredients. You mixed them the right way. You, you did all of the things. Sit back and enjoy that thing and let it flow. That's right, Dolores. Just relax and let it flow. Yes. You know what Tony Braxton said? That's right. Let, let it flow. Let me find that, that song. I'll start playing it. <laughs> you know? Is that, am I showing my age with that? <laughs> yeah, girl, I was right. I'm right there with you though, right? Um, yes, Shakura, you better, I don't know you, but you better go and tag, post it and tag me. I miss creative CEO on Instagram. I've been holding off posting stuff because I'm like, this is not perfect. Yet. Girl, stop. Girl, stop. It's not going to be perfect. <laughs> if that is your standard, it's never going to be perfect. Mm -mm. You're always going to be mad. And then what you do is you sit there and you watch everybody else post and you mad, well, I could, I could do that too. Why? I want to post too. Well, we'll go post. Stop looking at what they doing and go post. Okay? That happens so much. I can't yeah. even remember what it was, but there was something I just kept thinking about and thinking about and thinking about. And I never did it because I didn't have it all the way worked out. And then somebody did it. And I was like, well, there go. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I could have did this. I could have did ago. this. You know, and you have nobody but to blame but yourself because myself. Right. And the funny thing happens is not putting anybody's stuff, but some people will put out stuff that in comparison to how good you are. Cause here we're all on different levels. Let's just keep it real. We're all on different crafting levels. Not one level is better than the other level. They're just different. But you'll see something, you're like, I did, I could have done that. I did do that. And you're like, this whole time, I was thinking my stuff was not good enough. And all of these people out here going on with the same thing and doing doing everything right. Girl, please stop it. Yep. So, um, Danny, thanks for showing how easy and relaxing resin art can be. I'm ready to start my next craft project. Danny, so Yay! Awesome. So as you see, I've gotten these kind of to where I'm satisfied with them, but I also know they're going to move a little bit as the night goes. Um, but I'm a little satisfied, not a little, I'm a lot satisfied with what they look like now. So I'm sure I'll be um, even more satisfied. If you have a lot of air bubbles, um, a couple of things you can do, the heat gun or like the um, 
the blow dryer that I said. Um, but just know that anything with a lot of forceful heat is going to move your resin around. Um, you can use some alcohol spray and that'll pop the bubbles on the top as well. Um, or you can use a torch. I don't, I honestly don't recommend a torch on these molds. On most silicone molds, I don't recommend. I've ruined enough to, to let you know that I've already learned that lesson. Because what it'll do, it, it'll, it'll melt the mold and then it will adhere to your piece and it'll just be a mess. You'll ruin your mold and you'll ruin your piece. Mm -hmm. Okay. They say we are terrific. Mary says, Karen and Danny, y'all are just terrific. Thoroughly enjoying the class. Thank you for being so fun. You're welcome, Mary. Thank you for being here. Thank you. <laughs> yes. A uh, beautiful space just to release and be yourself. Lifelong crafter. Art happens when you release. That is so true. That is so true. That is right. Oh, Danny. So that is so pretty already. That is going to be beautiful. I like it. I may have to be a bad mom and try to get on here before game time this weekend. <laughs> so, so I can have five minutes to spare. In other words, she's going to go and do her thing. She's going to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with it. I'm with it. That's fine. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. So I'm going to move this side out of the way. Um, just to kind of show you next steps, potential next steps. So you can be done with your, your coasters if you want to be. Once they're cured tomorrow, you can be done with them. Oh my um, God, that's so pretty. <laughs> thank you. And as you can see, it mixed and melded a little bit. So, um, you know, that's what happens. So if you are a person that wants your geodes to be a little bit more defined, then you can use paint pens. Um, and I have a pasta paint pen, but there's, there's multiple paint pens that you could use um, to kind of go in and define some of these lines. And so this is after it's dried and cured. It's hard, it's ready to go and everything, right? Correct. This would be tomorrow morning or sometime tomorrow. And so you would just take your paint pen and just kind of find um, where you think some lines would work good. And again, they don't have to be perfect. I like them to kind of follow the flow of what's already going on on the coaster. And I have a, like a lot of gold in this one already. Could you use loose glitter um, or does it need to be added to the resin? Um, I mean, you could, but if you sprinkle like glitter on top of like wet resin, it's gonna like disperse. Yeah. And that may be the look you're going for. Um, mm -hmm. But if you want it more controlled, then you would mix the glitter with a little bit of resin. So it's almost like a paste. Gotcha. Amy says this makes her want to cry. She loves the inspiration. She needed to hear it. Oh, that's oh, great. E? <laughs> Sometimes I have want permission. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no. I was just saying I also have a white um, paint pen. So I like putting multiple colors. And y'all see, she just draw some squiggly little lines on there. Just some squiggly lines. It, it's not perfect. Y'all don't have to get your geometry and your, project, your protractor out. <laughs> And all of that, just draw some darn lines on the thing and make it look cute. Cause it's anything in nature, things are ra random in the geode. It's, it doesn't have to be perfect. It is perfectly imperfect. I think one of my teammates, that is basic. That is her, the name of her company is perfectly imperfect, you know? And that's what it is. Yep. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's really it. And from here for these, I would put another thin um, layer of just clear resin because the paint pen will rub off if you don't. Okay. Got it. Okay. I'm not going to do that today because I've used all of my resin. So, <laughs> <laughs> how do you and, keep linen hair off of your project? Um, honestly, for the most part, I leave it up to to God. Uh, but I do. <laughs> 
but I don't have any, I don't have any cuts and things like that. So there's like, there's not a lot of hair and things flying around. Um, but I'm going to my aunt's house in a couple of weeks and I have these big like picnic food covers mm-hmm. um, that I have in my car that I'll be using there because mostly I'll be working outside um, at her house and she has all the space for me to work outside. There's like three different areas. So I have those to help keep um, extra stuff. That's cool. Off my resin projects. Danny, you a lot of people to- though, I do know, just kind of get like those big, um, or depending on how big your project is, like a, a food container. Mm-hmm. If it's small enough or um, a big storage plastic bin and mm-hmm. put it over. You are inspiring a lot of people. A lot of people are saying that their children are watching and they're saying this is so cool. And people are, they can't wait to go to Michael's tomorrow. They're so super excited. They didn't know it Yay. could be relaxing. Yeah. And um, Demetra asked, what is alcohol spray? Just alcohol in a spray bottle. Um, mm-hmm. I think I have 70 something percent. The higher the percentage, the better it is for resin to pop the bubbles um, and it evaporates quicker, the higher the percentage, but it, it all works. Um, I, I got what I could during the pandemic. So that's, that's what I have. Good. And I put it in like a little spray bottle. Yeah. Um, where did you get the molds from? The square one in particular? The square ones I got from Amazon. Okay. Um, I think... What other alternatives can you use if you don't have a geo mold? Um, you can really make a geode out of everything. Like it, it doesn't have to be a mold that's like rough around the edges or anything. Um, there's some just plain circle molds. There's some hexagon molds. There's some just straight square molds. Um, the geode is in the design that you put into it. Mm-hmm. Um. Where are the instructions and list of ingredients? When you go back to where you registered for this class on michaels.com, she has a, there's a list of all the stuff that she used. Yeah. And I can probably not tonight, uh, but tomorrow I can put a list on uh, maybe Instagram with the links for you guys. Absolutely. Yep. So make sure that you're following her um, in Instagram. I'm trying to get, I'm so far behind. My thing says 99 new messages. I'm trying, to, <laughs> I'm trying to get everybody. So listen, chalk it up to my eyeballs, not being able to see everything all at one time if I miss your question. Okay, That's go fine. ahead, Danny. I don't want to hold, go ahead if you have something. Oh no, I was just going to show the last step um, if you so choose to do it. I've already done this one a little bit, but I have what's uh, the Krylon leafing pin. They come in gold and silver and I believe copper, but I just have the gold and silver. If y'all can't tell, I love gold. Um, But if you want to, if you decide not to draw the lines on or if you decide to draw the lines on your coasters, once they're cured and hard and you pull them out of the mold, you can line the edges with the paint pen like I have done here. I've only done the top. If you guys can see just the light line, it doesn't take a lot to do that. And then um, I didn't really do the sides because it wasn't making too much of a difference, but you can if you want. I don't know if you guys can see that really well, but just me filling in the color on the sides. And just make sure um, (laughs) this paint can get all over your hands. (laughs) So just be mindful like where you are where you're touching because you can look down and then you have like little paint tracks all over your coaster. Mm -hmm. I've done that before. Yeah. And it was so pretty. And now I got these little specks of paint. Yes. Crazy. Yeah. But you can use um, alcohol or like you get a Q-tip with alcohol or acetone and clean that right on up. Cool. Good. Good to know. It's been a great pastime. She said Desiree, no, Del Rey, Del Rey Jackson said, you're not going to have her messing up her craft room. Um, buying resin. She just cleaned it up. She was trying to clean it up tonight. And now you're going to mess. mess Listen, go, go and get that resin girl. <laughs> if, if you're anywhere near the Laurel Michael, um, the Michael and Laurel, Maryland, they are fully stocked today. So right. Right. <laughs> I went in Y'all there. Run. <laughs> uh, Jamira asked, when do you seal? It's a, I always have a tough time after this step. When do you seal again? Um, so for, for these, I don't always seal 
when I'm just doing the edges. I just kind of let it dry and let it go. Um, but if you want to, um, you would just have to make sure that whatever layer that you've done last with resin has been cured. So the next day, um, and then you'll do another light coat of resin. If I wanted to seal these edges in, um, really I would get some liquid latex and paint the back of this so that the resin doesn't drip under here. And I would set it on top of a cup, kind of like this, and just um, pour the clear resin and, and do what they call doming. So just really kind of bring it to the edge and then I'd work it along the side to get all of that covered up. But before you move on to any other layer, your next layer, whether it's your second layer or your last layer, you wanna make sure your previous layer is cured. Um, depending on what you're doing, like if you're not touching and it's still in the mold, it could be before 24 hours, usually probably about three or four hours if you're not touching it and you're just pouring more resin on top. Um, but if you're going to touch it, if you're going to use a paint pen, you want to make sure it's hard before you move on. Okay. Um, Patty says she's starting her business journey. Where should she start for support? Well, you're in the right place, Patty. <laughs> <laughs> you're in the right place. Uh, you can follow me. Go ahead and follow me over at um, uh, the Creative Boss Collective on on Facebook. That's where you're for me. That's where you would want to go, and that's what I do. I help people get on their business journey and get their stuff together. But listen, we got more questions. Um, okay. And Shalita, I'm gonna let Shalita and Janae start talking about them because I'm so far behind in the messages. I can't see them all. So Shalita, you want to take that? Yeah, Dawn asks, uh, how should you dispose of leftover resin? Um, so for me, usually I kind of leave my stuff to dry. Um, what I'll do is I, I keep my, um, my sticks and I just kind of clean them off and put them down on the silicone mat. And I stack my cups up and I will usually let them dry. Um, so like tomorrow morning, I'll come back and then just throw them away. Um, I have a ton of plastic bags that I'll, I'll wrap them up in. Um, but if you need to get this cleaned up tonight, it's the same process. Um, just kind of make sure, I would say double bag just so that it won't spill anywhere and, and put it in the trash. Okay, I have one. Um, someone wants to know, sorry if it's off topic, but can the resin be used over pictures or vinyl? Uh, yes. Um, I don't have anything here, but yes, you can use um, resin over pictures. For pictures, you want to make sure that there is a, a coating on top. Um, so I know a lot of people like laminate their pictures first, um, because if you pour the resin directly on the picture, it's going to like fade and, and eat away at it. Um, so you want to make sure that there is some sort of protective coating over the pictures. Um, and then for vinyl, I pour resin over vinyl all the time when I'm personalizing things. Um, I use my Cricut and I cut it out and lay it down. Um, I use the adhesive vinyl, um, not the heat, the heat vinyl for like t-shirts. Um, and I lay it down and then pour a clear coat on top. Cool, 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 cool. Michelle asks, how long is the drying time before you take it out of the mold? Um, I would say at least before you can take it out of the mold, probably like 10, 12 hours. Um, it may still be a little bit bendy. So if you want to be 100% sure it's ready to come out, 24 hours. And every resin is a little bit different. Um, so usually they have, have instructions on how long you should allow it to cure. <clears throat> you got any more ladies? Uh, the last one I have is will paint wipe off? Like the, um, the paint pen that I just used over here, these will wipe off. Um, may not like right away, but like you see that I'm doing now, it just kind of like scrapes away. So if you got someone that's going to scratch at it, it will eventually come off, which is why I typically put a, a light layer of resin over it. Mm -hmm. I have one more. Um, can they be so creative as to put feathers in the resin? Like what can you put in the resin besides the crushed glass? Oh boy. Um, I've seen dried flower. I mean, I've seen, I've done dried flowers. Um, not typically 
um, flowers that weren't dried because it will take the color out of it um, and, they, and they won't look as good. Um, I've seen feathers done as well. Um, gosh, where, where are my girls? Tamika and Ziva, we really just had this conversation last week. There's so many things that you could put in resin. Um, there's sand. I know people work with ashes of loved ones that have passed on to make memorial um, pieces. You can really do a lot. Um, honestly, that's part of the whole creativity of it all. Like how far do you want to go? I love it. I see so much inspiration. Yep, Candy, someone the, said. Yep. Yep. There's so much inspiration in this group right now. Um, I'm really proud. Let me just say, I'm proud of you ladies that are here and actually doing the thing and getting excited about creativity. Um, again, this is great. This is great. Some people may have lost their mojo and now coming here has gotten people excited again. That's incredible. I love it. Yeah. Are they hand wash only? Yes. Um, resin coasters are hand wash only. You don't want to put these in, um, the dishwasher you don't want to put them in the microwave uh arch nemesis of resin is heat so just keep that in mind um like i said usually with my coasters i spray it down with alcohol and wipe it with a paper towel or like a lysol wipe or something like that but hand wash for sure and kind of like tepid water you don't want to get too hot cool 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 um Janae, was there more questions Yes, there was another question about, um, someone said that their resin got hard, it hardened and thickened. Is They want to know why does that happen? Um, like before they started pouring. So, so there's a couple of reasons why it can do that very quickly. Resin is a chemical. So once you mix those two pieces together, it starts the process of that chemical reaction. If your measurements are off, it can harden if you put too much of a pigment in there, it's gonna speed up that process, which is why I said we wanna go slow with the acrylic paint, because that's one of the ones that will definitely speed up that process. If you're pouring into something that is too deep, or if you make too much, um, like the other night, if you see my TikTok I made, I made about 24 ounces of resin. I got really ambitious and um, about eight ounces of that didn't make it. it. It hardened up on me because I made too much and it was, the cup was a little too deep. So um, with art resin, you can't do like really deep pours or have it sitting in a cup that's like small and deep or it'll harden up on you. Cool. <clears throat> um, we had someone, Leslie, you want to meet, I see a couple of people have worked together. Let's put Leslie up on the screen so we can see what she's done. Ooh, Ooh, Leslie. Very good. They look good, girl. Oh, I like that one. Okay. I love that gold in the middle, that middle one. Yes, honey. Nice job, girl. Did you enjoy yourself? I, I think you did. It looks like you did. You did? <laughs> Very good. Great. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. I saw someone else um, here, Lee. Let's see yours. Hey, girl. Hey. hey. <laughs> Let us see yours over there on that table. Okay. Oh, yes. I, I love it. And you I see you got black? the letters too over there. Oh, Leah's over here getting it. I getting see it. you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Let's see who else got something. Let me see. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I didn't mean to do that. What am I doing? Let's exit full screen and then let's go over to view. Okay, I'm not sure what happened to my screen standard. There we go. Um, but why can't I get back to gallery? Here we go. Oh, I, I'm not sure what we're doing here. I don't see. So you. I, I know see. she's sharing. She was sharing her screen. That's oh, what okay. it was. I didn't realize. Okay. Do we have, okay. Who else do we have that's done something? 
Anybody else? Gwen, you you poured tonight? I thought I saw Gwen on here. Okay, here, I see somebody. Tati, here we go. Oh, Ooh, nice. Okay, so I'm going to need everybody to stop screen sharing, please. Thank you. That's beautiful. I like that. That is beautiful. It's very different. I love the choice of colors. The gray it and looks the like yellow. Vanilla ice always cream. <laughs> oh, it sure does. It really does. Vanilla ice cream. I love it. Oh, and look at what Lee is doing. Somebody asked the question about how do you protect it? from dust and lint you see what she's doing there you go yeah that's, that's one of the right ways there. of doing it there you go <laughs> use those bins you know we all got a whole bunch of them bins in the house use that for that and okay. i don't even know why i don't use mine because i have a ton of empty ones in the closet right right <laughs> exactly exactly okay um oh who was that, that with the copper but they were sharing their screen and we don't we're not gonna do the share screen i'm gonna find you on the screen and i'll um i'll make you bigger but here's dominique okay Ooh, okay pretty pretty. Very pretty loving it i love the fact that you guys have all worked with us tonight Look at this. Yes, thank oh, you. Oh, okay. Somebody I get got real beachy deal. vibes with that. Who is that? That is Toya. Okay, Toya. <laughs> she I like did that. that. I love it. And then we have, let's see, this one right here. Jen Jenny. Uh, replace spotlight. There we go. There it is. Nice. Good love job. It. Y'all are doing so awesome. Love it, love it, love it. Did I miss anybody? Oh, look at this one. Ziva. Oh, I want to see. Yes, okay. honey. <laughs> love it. That whole zebra vibe going on. That's pretty. Mm -hmm. Where is my girl, Sally? She said she was going to be following along. Is she still on here? <laughs> Sally, if you're on here, raise your hand so we can she find gonna bust you. bust me out. <laughs> Look at this. Look at Wanda. Wanda, let us back see it again. Oh, did you use Beautiful. glitter, Wanda? See, that's a great, that's a great way to use the glitter right there. She did. She did. Isn't that awesome? I love it. I'm so happy right now. Oh, what let's see. Gwen. Let's look at Gwen's. Look at that. Oh, I love that. That is beautiful. I love that negative yeah. space. Let's look at Krish. Okay, oh. Chris got the Africa moles out. I see her. She she did a whole bunch tonight. <laughs> she did like Chris said she's not wasting no resin tonight. <laughs> like we're not wasting resin. <laughs> we don't waste resin. No, ma'am. We don't. Okay, let's look at Sally. Here we are. Yay, Sally. <laughs> oh, I like Ooh, those. Sally. That's pretty. The blue is so pretty. You did a good job. I love it. Thank I love you for it. following along. Next year, you can do the Christmas presents. <laughs> right. <laughs> Isn't it awesome? Okay, there we are. Let's remove the spotlight and bring you, Danny, and myself back up to the screen. Um, and there we go, guys. Um, Uh-oh, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to add. Hold on. Add. There we go. Both of us again. <laughs> All right, y'all in this chat. Y'all tell me how y'all like this. Let Michaels know that you liked this class. Okay. Yes, tell him bring me Let back. Let him know in the chat. I love the class. Yes. Y'all better keep that same energy tomorrow when y'all get them um, surveys too. <laughs> I know <okay>? that's right. <laughs> <laughs> keep this same energy tomorrow. All my home health <laughs> people, you know how important them surveys are. Right. Surveys <laughs> mean something. Okay. Danny, let me tell you something. This was amazing. It's amazing. So, but before we really start closing out, I want to go ahead and allow my team to do the giveaway. Shalita. Hey Shalita. guys. So the question is, what is the ratio for the pigment to resin. Ooh, Ooh that's a good mm. one. Whoever puts it in first. 
Okay, it was Dawn Livingston. Dawn Livingston. Boom. This will be on your way tomorrow, Dawn. So you can take it to Michael's and spend it. How about that? That's awesome. <laughs> yes. We're doing another one or no? We're doing another one. One okay. more. What's the difference between epoxy and resin? I'm so proud of y'all. I know. <laughs> Janae, can you tell me who the first one was? I just see a lot of right answers. <laughs> you got to scroll all the way back. Scroll all the way back. Can you hear me? I think, okay. it, I think it was Crafting 721. Somebody said Pax Tisdale. A lot yeah, of people are saying Pax. Pax. Yeah, Pax. A lot of people Tisdale. are saying Pax. Pax Tisdale. Look, and y'all, right, look at that. I love that. All right, so here's Pax. I got to find, um, what was the other name? Dawn Livingston. Hey, Pax. Thank you for being here. This is on its way to you, sweetheart. I appreciate it. And Dawn Livingston, are you on camera so I can bring you up and we can see you? You got to raise your hand. Raise your hand for me so I can bring you up if you want to be brought up. If you don't, not a problem. We'll still send it to you. Yes, Pax is at the beach. We're loving yeah, it. It's hanging out. We're loving it. Loving the background. Right. Yes, honey. There we go. Camera ready tonight. That's no problem. Thank you for being here. And thank you too, Pax. I appreciate you. <laughs> okay. Listen, y'all, we had a great time. I know I had a great time. I had a great time. So what I want to do, we've got our two giveaways done. We've said our thank yous to all of the people um, that helped prior to, but I want to personally thank you. I want to thank you for being here. And I want to leave you with a couple of things. But first, I'm going to lead, let Danny say, Danny, what is it which, what, what has this experience been for you tonight? Number one, number one. <sighs> So first of all, can I just say thank you to all of my friends and family that that hopped on? Like I really appreciate y'all. Like y'all don't know, um, and and my coworkers, my Bayada family. I just that's amazing. Um, gosh, what this means to me? It, <laughs> it means a lot. You know, um, it's a little validating um, because I have. Um, not a little validating. It's a lot validating. I am beginning to offer resin classes yes. and I kind of had the doubt that maybe I couldn't do it. So <laughs> this is kind of, it's really exciting and, and it validates that um, people, people will learn from me. Uh, I want to make sure that I'm giving good information in the classes. So tell them a little bit about your resin class. Well, I have um, three resin classes posted on my website. Um, two of them are in April, and we're going to be doing a white and gold geode like this back here. Now, this isn't like you go out and get all your supplies. I'm actually sending you a kit of everything that you're going to need, almost everything, like your mask and things like that, you, you will have to get yourself. But for the majority, um, you will have a kit of everything that you need to make an 8 by 10 resin geode. Um, and a little extra, you know, goody in there. Just think paint and sip vibes and you might be able to figure out where we're going. Um, and I've also posted last night, it went live, my Mother's Day class. Um, so the, the difference is with the geode, it's a two session class. Cause like I said, a, the tip to a good geode is about two to three layers. So we're gonna at least get you two layers with me to make sure that your, your geode comes out looking great. For the Mother's Day class, we're doing a brunch and pour. So it's gonna be one layer, um, but the it's going to be set up for you. So I have a couple examples so I can kind of show you. You're gonna have the choice of two canvases. Now these are completely done. So yours will not look like this but a lot of the prep will be already done for you to either do a crown um, because we are celebrating our queens, our mothers. Right. Or the queen Nefertiti herself. Um, so these are the, 
these are the pours that we'll be doing for the Mother's Day classes. And we're going to keep it beachy vibes. Everybody's going to be doing the beachy vibes. Um, we're going to talk about how to get some good waves and some good lacing um, and have something that you've made and that you're really proud of to hang on your wall or give to your mom. So if you're interested in those, you can go to my website and I do have a special code for you for 25% off. And it is Michael's 25. Michael's 25. Y'all, she better sell out. <laughs> All of y'all been talking about how great she was tonight. She better sell out tonight. Michael's the- 25 just dropped her link in the chat. Y'all better go after we click done. Y'all better go over there and get it. You might want to open up another screen and click it now. So <laughs> this is my sell out for you get there. Okay. And the classes are being kept small. Okay. Yeah. So for the, the April classes, I'm only allowing 15 people in. I'm shutting down that first class um, in a couple of days on the 29th so that I can make sure I get your kits packed up and sent to you. Uh, for the Mother's Day class, I'm allowing 16 because I want you to come with your mom or come with the favorite mom in your life. So you guys come and do this together. This would be great as a mother daughter. We had a lot of mother daughters on here tonight, right? So that yep. would be a great for all you ladies who were saying that your daughter, one lady was like, her daughter now wants to get into resin. So she's probably thanking you for her pockets about to get a little lighter to go sorry. and get all the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. It's okay. Sorry, not sorry. But you know, go, it'll be great. So yes, April class, only 15 people. Go ahead and sign up with Danny. Um, you want to learn from her. She has a lot more to give. She has a lot more to give. These are one of these extraordinary everyday women. She doesn't have 10, 20, 30,000 followers, but she has a lot to say and a lot to give. And so you can learn a lot from her. Let's connect. This is another thing I wanted to share. Um, this is resin. This is a way I just wanted to give you a couple of ideas about how things are. This is a resin, um, uh, uh, tumbler done by one of our tribe members, Ziva Perkins. Um, and she's got my name on it. Look at that. Cause you know, I'm a purple girl, right? So, you know, Miss Creative CEO and then my name on the back with the glitter and all of that. There's so many things that you can do with resin. And Danny is there. Somebody in the chat said, Danny, teach me, teach me, Danny. That, that was my favorite cousin to Carol. <laughs> oh, that was? Oh, I didn't even see. Well, she needed to be saw- <laughs> Um, somebody did ask when the Mother's Day class was, and it's May 8th. It's that Saturday. So mm-hmm. come and have brunch mm-hmm. and learn how to do uh, one of those paintings. Yes, yes. We have a whole lot coming up for you guys. Uh, but wait a minute before I start that, Danny, leave the people with that one thing that you want to tell all these aspiring women, these inspiring crafters that might want to just either do crafting or get their turn their hobby into a hustle. What do you want to tell them? Um, you know, we've, we've actually alluded to it tonight. Don't let anyone tell you you're not creative. That and especially yourself. That's it. Because I know a lot of us say, I'm not creative. I'm not artistic. I've said it to myself. My mother, I don't know if she's on the call, but my mother can draw. I tell you, I can't draw like that. And so a lot of times in my mind, I'm not creative. I'm not artistic. I can't draw like my mama, but my creativity is just a little different. It's a little different. It's just a little different. And that's not, and it's okay. That's it. I, I approve this message. Okay? <laughs> I approve this message. Yes. Trust yourself. You were given a gift that nobody else was given. Trust it and go have fun with it. When you walk into Michael's, go with the purpose and the intention of creating the beauty that you want to see in the world, not the beauty that someone else chose to put into the world. You bring you to the world. We need you. You were created for a reason. We need you. The world needs you, not me. It needs you. It needs me too, but it doesn't need you trying to be me. Okay. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. That's right. Everybody have it. So if I, if we don't leave you with anything else, know that. Okay. Know that. So you can reach me, Ms. Creative CEO. You can see it right there, Ms. Creative CEO.com. Okay. If you are interested in learning about, you know, business and, and how to get your mindset, I will tell you right now, 90% of my work is mindset work. It is mindset work. 
okay? Because that's where it all starts. So if you're interested in that, if you wanna be around my tribe of people, the people that are amazing that help me push, Danny is a part of my tribe, uh, where you can ask questions and you can learn, go over to the Creative Boss Collective on Facebook. Make sure you go and join that. Pretty soon, right now, my membership is closed because I don't always keep it open because it's, that's not what this is. I like to get to know and work with my members. That will be opening up soon. So you can go to my website and get on the uh, mailing list for my, my group, however, my membership group. However, I have other ways. If you want to work with me, you can consultations or things like that. You can do that as well. But I want to say to you, thank you. Thank you, Michaels. Thank you, Danny, for being here. You were awesome. Thank amazing. You. And also, you guys, right now, they're going to drop the drop it in. Tonight, do not play. Tonight, back here, same time, same place, next week, every Thursday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We will be here, me and another fabulous creator that you're going to relate to and fall in love with the way we have fallen in love with her. Her name is Marquita Moore. And you know, those beautiful reeds that you have that look like a head and all this hair on the back. She will be here making those with you and showing you how to do it. And man, does she have a story to tell. So make sure that you go over to michaels.com tonight and register, register, register for all the courses. Now, if you want to go to my website, Miss Create. Miss, where is it? MissCreativeCEO.com and go under MCC and Michaels. MCC and Michaels, all the links to all the classes will be there. There's four up there right now. It'll be three afterwards because I'm gonna take or I'm gonna move Danny's, but it'll be three, but I will be adding more as we get closer. So keep checking back, but go ahead and register for all three classes. Um, that are up there right now. It's going to be the same vibe, the same energy, a lot of fun. You're going to learn something new every week. And we're just going to be here together in sisterhood and brotherhood. We won't leave the guys out either. Okay. Ooh, especially on that, that challenge. That oh, yes. Challenge. Oh, yes. We mm. have coming up week number three, week number three, we have Jantel and her husband, John, will be here with the craft challenge, his versus hers. They're going to have a craft challenge. So make sure you go ahead and tell your husbands now, put it on their calendar because you know, or your significant other, because you know how they are. Yep, I, I know there's dudes in here, but y'all know how you are. Put it down there and let them know. This is what we doing on this. It'll be a little cute little date night for you because that's what she's about. Date, dating and romance and keeping it alive with you and your, your hubby. So it's going to be fun. We got something for all. This whole series is going to be lit lit. It's going to be amazing. I'm so excited about it. So with that being said, Danny, was there anything else that you wanted to say? Um, actually I do there, there's been a couple private messages come through. If you guys could, uh, message me on Instagram, cause I'm never going to be able to find you on here. So if you had some questions that you wanted to get to me privately, just find me on Instagram and message me there and I'll get back to you. Amazing. 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 So here's the thing, people. Um, I think that's it for us. We're going to get out of here for tonight. We're going to be op optimistic y'all. I want y'all to be happy. I want to look at all your beautiful faces. Let me see you. <laughs> yes. Now I can scroll and see who's on here. <laughs> yes. I'm going to remove the, remove the spotlight and you can see all the gallery hey, people. Hey, hey y'all. All right. Thank y'all for joining. Thank you guys. Be optimistic. I'm going to see you same time, same place next week. I'm looking forward to it. Peace. I holla. Bye.